So I just want to cover this again with you. Graphing a simple rational function. Copious notes. Ready? So there are some things. We have a list of things that we need. What's one of the things? It doesn't even matter the order. Matt, we need an x-intercept. To find an x-intercept, what do we do? Exactly. Take the numerator and set it equal to 0, right? So take x plus 2 equals 0. Solve, and we get x is equal to negative 2, which means we have what? The point what? We have the point negative 2, 0. That's going to help us with our graph. What else do we need? So we have our y-intercept. We have that checked off. The next thing? <clears throat> there should be a list. Yeah, of course. Good job, dude. So we have the y-intercept. Y-intercept. How do you find the y-intercept? Not f of x equals 0, just f of 0, which means, Jason, every place we found an x, we'd put a, a 0. So it would look like 0 plus 2, wouldn't it, over 0 plus 3, which would equal what? <clears throat> which would equal two-thirds. Two-thirds. Right? <clears throat> and that gives us what point? <clears throat> yes? Yes? Yes. Zero two-thirds. Yes. Sorry. So we have that. Now what? Get four things. We kind of have this simple graph. Dalton? Yeah, a vertical asymptote. How do you find a vertical asymptote? Exactly, so the denominator equals 0. So the denominator is x plus 3. So x plus 3 equals 0. x equals what? Equals negative 3. What does this look like? <clears throat> what does this look like? What does a vertical asymptote look like? Yeah, perfect. It's, an, it's a vertical line, right? So it's, when we start graphing, we're going to graph this vertical line. And at the top of the vertical line, we're going to put x is negative 3, right? Is there a horizontal asymptote here? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. The horizontal asymptote is 1. How do we know that? The, the numerator and the denominator have the same exponential value for x, don't they? x to the first, x to the first. So what we do is we take the coefficient of that, the coefficient, the number in front of those, which is 1 here and 1 here. So is y is equal to 1. What does that look like? A horizontal line that's labeled, nope, y equals 1. <clears throat> Let's try to put our pieces together now. Ready? So you, first thing you did was you built this great list, didn't you? So hopefully you have all this stuff. So take all this stuff and make your graph out of it. So take the Cartesian plane. Right? Then we have x is equal to 3. I'm going to put this in in just any order, I guess. If you don't mind, can I put this in first, the vertical asymptote? And it's x is negative 3, so we'll just say this is x is negative 3. How do I know that this is x is negative 3? Two ways. One, because I put it there, but it can be negative 3 because it's on the left-hand side of, of x is 0, isn't it? Okay. What points did we get here? Oh, we also have the other, we also have this, right? We have this horizontal asymptote, and it's what? y equals 1. So I have to draw this dotted line, and then I have to label it y equals 1. So far, so good? And we had some points, didn't we? Negative 2, 0, is that right? So negative 2, 0. What else? 0, 2 thirds maybe is here. Right? So look, we can see now what this thing has to look like, right? You have to remember, it has this end behavior. This horizontal asymptote here means that way out here, the height is going to get near 1, isn't it? And we also know it can't pass through this yellow line, right? So this is what's going to happen. Our function is going to do this. It's going to go from here. It's going to pass through this point, this point, right? It can't hit this line, so it's just going to run up. It's going to keep getting closer and closer and closer and closer to it. And even though it looks like it's going to touch it here, Matt, it's not, right? It's that Murphy's Law of Halves things, right? So some of you, when you graphed it, you gave me this piece of the graph here, and that's part, that's part of it, but 
what happens over on this side? What happens when x is less than the negative 3? How would you find out? Because something happens over here. How do you find out what happens over here? Yeah, put a number in. Give me a number that's over here. Give me an x value that's over here. So somebody wants to take f of negative 5. You could take f of negative 4, but right? Take f of negative something that's less than that, right? And we would have negative 5, right? Plus 2 over negative 5 plus 3 is negative 3 over negative 2, which is what? Positive 3 over 2. What's, how much is 3 over 2? 1 and a half, right? So let's just pretend that this is negative 5. This is the point negative 5, comma, 1 half. So what does our function do here? Can it go through this line? No. So, And we know when it gets this way, what's the height the height's going to get near what? It's going to get near 1. So as it goes this way, the height's going to get near 1. If we go this way, the height's going to push up against this and go straight up, isn't it? This is, called this is called a hyperbola. This is hyperbolic behavior right here. And all of the graphs that we had on our quiz look like this.